Paul, thanks very much for doing this, big man. And thanks for agreeing to sign for Peterhead part-time one night <laughs> a week. Fancy it? My agent will call you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you plenty of money. So sitting here in the great surroundings of Lennox Town, how does this compare to, to you growing up as a kid? No, for me, you know, it's just uh, it's an est another step of my life, you yeah. know, because uh, I just grew up in a quite a happy environment, mm -hmm. you know, quite a, a nice environment. And uh, as you know, in Africa, of course, you know, facilities is not the best, but uh, you have, we have good people, mm -hmm. you know, people who love and appreciate what they have, you know. There is no match, there is no PlayStation, there is no, like, other things, but there is, there is balls, you know. And when one guy have a ball in the city or in, the, in your local area, you have, there is like 40 kids will run and try to get this ball. You know, and try to play that, you know, and th that show that we, we live outside, you know. And of course, for me, coming here is, is great as well. It's another step of my life, you know, uh, walking and meeting some really happy people as well, you know, because I feel that uh, people from uh, Scotland are really happy, you know, uh, just like to make jokes, like to uh, love life, you know, and they love football, which is coming with what I love. So, in my time, is great. Because I remember you told me that when you were younger, obviously the kids here now, they get all these fancy sessions and training drills, but mm. I think you told me that you and your brother used to stand and kick the ball off the wall for, for hours. Yeah, but that's, that was based in the, the, the academy where I went. Mm -hmm. we, we was really, uh, we had a great, great uh, man, uh, manager. Uh, he just set the academy and we had some exercise that we had to do before to get like reward, like a football boot, you know, because I was playing barefoot just to have the feeling of the ball, wow. you know, and how to, like when you go in Brazil, you see kids playing on the sun uh, near the beach, uh -huh. you know, without, with barefoot, you know, and that's where you, you, you know, you get uh, know the ball really. And before to get, the, to, to get this, uh, your, your football boots, you had to do like few exercise, like 10 exercise, uh, which uh, we, call, we used to call it degrees, which was like technical exercise. You had to uh, like jungle the ball with, let's say with your head, up and down to, to the pitch, yeah. you know, to, and uh, without the ball going in the floor, you know, you have to jungle the ball with both feet, you know, going up and down. And, uh, uh, you know, different, different drills, kind, uh, different yeah. drills, you know. Yeah. And of course, in, you know, in Celtic, you know, I saw the, the boys, they, they're doing like different drills as well with a uh, few guys' names, stuff like that. I think that's great. Yeah, the wee Celtic turns now, you like that? Uh, Absolutely, yeah. So that academy you went to, talk us through some of the, the names that were there, what other players were went through there? Yeah, uh, I think we, you, you all know Yaya Toure, uh -huh. and, and uh, we had uh, Salomon Kalu from yeah. Chelsea, we had uh, Gervinho from Arsenal Roma. We had uh, Zucura Maestro from, from Tottenham Celtic, uh, uh, Sevilla. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, uh, Romaric. Drogba was not from the academy. Drogba has uh, been raised in France. Oh, okay. He was young, he was like maybe two, three, and he went to France. And, uh, and that's where he really started. And Drogba was a goal scorer. Yeah. Drogba could score goals, but in this academy, we had technical players, you know, and who could provide the ball for Drogba in the national team too, yeah. which was uh, really, really make good mixture because we, we was really good passing the ball, like uh, 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 dribbling, you know, but scoring was like a weakness for our team and having Drogba in that team with all the skills he had and few other players, of course, from not this academy, just made this national team really, really strong team. So why do you think your academy produced so many good players? Was it down to the coaches that you had there? Yeah, I think I think the coaching uh, the coaching we had was amazing, and uh, the uh, the manager there, Jean Magu, you know, created this academy back in uh, in Ivory Coast, and it, it just the result was unbelievable because Ivory Coast have been qualified for the first time of the World Cup in 2000 and for for the World Cup in Germany in 2006 with this generation of players. And we had three times we went to the, in a row, we went to the World Cup, wow. you know, with this generation of players. And now this generation just, a few of us getting old, 
you know, for this term. Unfortunately, you know, there is few other players coming, but, you know, with this generation and good base of players finish, you know, because we, all, all of us were retired, you know, we didn't qualify, you know, mm -hmm. and that showed that, you know, this work he did for seven years in Ivory Coast just paid. Yeah. You know, and unfortunately, he just left the, the country and that didn't carry on. Stopped uh, yeah. and, and that's it. See, the whole time you were in the academy, was it always the boys' dream to get a move to, to Europe? To be honest, yeah, you know, that was the dream, you know, and I remember, yeah, having like uh, uh, an interview uh, when he was, I don't, I can't remember, maybe he was 13, 15, and the guy asked him, who, where does he want to play? And he said, I want to play for Barcelona. He did play for, for Barcelona. Barcelona. Wow. He was young and from, from Ivory Coast, you know, from Africa, there's no many players, you know, like, you know, back in the days, we was like thinking about playing for Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I said that, and he did, you know, and uh, that show, you know, when you believe in something, you know, it can happen. Walk, it can happen. Yeah. So your move to Arsenal, uh, how, did, how did that come about? Uh, you know, Jean Maguire was a friend of Arsene Wenger, mm -hmm. and I think Arsene Wenger knew about this academy. And we went in uh, Feyenoord to play a tournament. Uh, and this tournament, we had Real Madrid there, Feyenoord there, we had uh, Queen's Park Rangers, you know, back in the days. We had uh, that the team I remember. There is few other teams there, but I remember that Real Madrid was one of the best teams there. We, we did qualify to the final against uh, Feyenoord, you know, and we did well. Mm -hmm. We did well and we lost on the final and I had a red card. Just <laughs> cry, you know, I always remember that, you know. Uh, we lost 2-1 and uh, I think we was the better team we should have won. Mr. Wenger was in this tournament, you know, and he saw a few of us and he just started believing in this academy. And, uh, and, and uh, I did a try coming in, uh, in, Ars uh, in Arsenal where uh, the try was successful, you know, and that's the way I came here. Uh, Ray, but I had to tackle him, eh? Uh, uh, that's what I was going to ask you, because Ray Parler tells the story that you tackled the manager. Is that true? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And uh, this is all the advice I can give to all young players. Tackle you go man. to any, any club, just make sure you tackle the manager. <laughs> I'm how, joking, yeah. How was, uh, how was yeah. Arsene Wenger for you when you first yeah, moved over? My father. My yeah, father. your father, well, yeah. We always call him my father because he's the one who just believed in me from the start. Mm -hmm. And there is one other guy that I need to mention, David Dean. And uh, David Dean uh, and for me, Mr. Wenger, they're still my fathers, you know, because they just believe in me. And that was, that was really, really important for me. And uh, if I don't hold this career, it's because of, uh, of course, few guys, you know, Jean Maguillot, uh, few, um, Arsene Wenger, David Dean, and uh, uh, Amuel Lambert, you know, there's few people, you know, but my my success in, in in Europe really came from from Mr. Wenger and Mr. Dean Defender. What about the players that were there? Because obviously there was players such as Keown and yourself as a centre half. How were the older players for you coming through? Would, would they help you? Would they be would they be hard on you? No, they was amazing with me. Yeah, they was amazing with me. You know, when I mean they was amazing, they they helped me. You know, but not in the his way not in the easy way. And I think the good thing for me that I, I was able to take any, any advice and I was able to listen, you know, and I think that's key. When you're a young player and you come to a big, uh, to a big club and then you, f you meet like experienced players, you know, some young players, you know, they, they can learn from those players by just coming to them, talking to them, listening to them. You know, you can learn so much. And that's what I did when I was young. I was listening to Martin Keown, even though I was playing on his place. I was listening to uh, Saul Campbell. I was listening to uh, 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 Dennis Bergkamp, Patrick Vieira, Rui Paolo. You know, all those guys helped me unbelievable. Rui pa uh, Robert Pires, Thierry Henry, you know. And uh, all of them was different, you know. Uh, some was really hard on me, some was like nice with me, mm -hmm. but you know, that raised me mm -hmm. up, you know, and that's really important. Because you say you took the place of uh, Martin Keown, some legends, Tony Adams had played centre half for Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Did you feel pressure 
replacing those players or did you just go out and play? Uh, for me, I was, I was, a, I was a crazy, how we call it, I was a, I was a crazy boy, you know. Yeah. For me, it was all about playing football and all about giving everything every day yeah. at training and in games, you know. And I was not thinking. I had no things. I was working uh -huh. hard, enjoying my the football, enjoying my days, you know. And I was, for me, I was surprised to be in this club, uh -huh. you know, because even in my dreams, to be honest, I was not thinking to play for Arsenal. Yeah. How did you find the culture in England? Because see, like your players like Keon and Ray Parler, mm. they're famous for going down the pub and having having a drink. Would you ever get pulled on sessions like that? Yeah, the culture was different, to yeah. be honest. And uh, when I came, I had to adapt, mm. you know. And uh, of course, my country is be the same, you know. You, you know, people going to the pubs as well, you know. Mm -hmm. In Ivory Coast, we call it maki. Right. And uh, everywhere in Ivory Coast, you know, you go there is. Like uh, there's maki everywhere, right. to be honest, and I'm, I was be used to that situation. But you know, uh, these guys just uh, uh, they they teach me to be a, a top player, uh -huh. you know. And uh, and there was an example for me every day at training, working hard at training because mm. that's where I really spending time with them, you know, at training. And for, of course, we had like time out together, going for. Uh, for for dinner or to f going to to enjoy ourselves in different places, you know. Mm -hmm. But the main thing was the work, hard work. Uh -huh. um, two thousand and three, two thousand and four, the famous invincible season. How far into the season did you think this is possible? We can do this. We was taking game by game, uh -huh. you know. And for us, it was one game at a time. You know, it wasn't like the bigger picture, you know, because you know. It's really difficult to play 90 minutes and win a game. Mm -hmm. And if you think about like, yeah, you want to make set a record, I think you won't make it because it's too hard. But by giving everything every day, like a training, because if you don't do the basic mm -hmm. a training, you won't perform in the game, in the games, you know. And that was the key: work hard at training, give everything at training, and on the on Saturday just. Smash any team coming. Uh -huh. So does that come from the manager? Was it that? Was that the manager's philosophy? You must work hard in training every day, or was it older players that demanded that? To, to be honest, you know, uh, 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 training was great trainings, you know, and uh, it was a lot of games, you know, and a lot of competition. And of course, we, the players we had was really, really experienced players, and there was winners, you know, they wanted to win at training every day. Would there be fights in that training? Was that intense? It was oh. really intense. Yeah. And to be honest, you know, training for me was harder than games. Yeah. Some games were easier uh -huh. because training to play against uh, uh, Dennis Bergkamp because he was not maybe starting uh, every, uh, all the games. You know, it was tough. Mm -hmm. You know, it was really, really tough. And you had uh, Will Seven Whitford playing against you at training every time. You had, and uh, the manager was changing. Sometimes you had to play against Thierry Henry. Uh -huh. You know, because. Uh, not every player was playing every game, you know, and you learn so much from that, you know, uh -huh. because to be in front of those top players, you need to be in your best, you know. Was, was that, would that be your favourite season in, in, in football? Oh, Vincible? yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Different, uh -huh. different, how, yeah. How was the feeling when, once it was accomplished? How was that feeling? It was a great feeling, you know, and at the time it was, it was a great feeling, but now even more, uh -huh. because you see team coming, trying to get up, but, you know, it's difficult. And uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, we're still proud of that, definitely. But uh, of course, you know that record has set to be beat, you know. And uh, and we will see. Was it the, was that the best team you played with that that group? Oh of yeah, players? oh uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, who would definitely. have been the best? Henri? The best, no, uh, Dennis Bergkamp. Bergkamp, the best, yeah. yeah Bergkamp, Henri, yeah. Dennis yeah. yeah, we say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think Terry, we, we say the same. Uh -huh. This guy was uh, he's from another world. Uh -huh. yeah. he, um, he touch and vision oh, was touch brilliant. And eh? vision, you know, and uh -huh. you to chip balls all the time. Uh -huh. You know, you go press him. Goalkeeper is like two meter out from the line. Chip the ball in his. It's a goal. It's uh -huh. a goal. In, he used to do that time and time and time. Uh -huh. And as a defender, you get close. You know, he pass you or he chip the ball. You know, uh, you know, it was unbelievable. Just doing the right thing at the right time. Uh -huh. Just going on about you say, why do you think Arsenal? Are, uh, are struggling just now with the same manager who must have the same beliefs as he had back then. Why do you think it's, it's kind of gone downhill? No, I, I think it, it's difficult for me because I'm not in the club. You don't know what's going on. I, I, I don't know what's going on there. I think you have to be able to be in the club and as a manager now, as a coach now, and of course, 
uh, no manager yet. <laughs> <laughs> As a coach, you know, uh, 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 I, uh, I learned that, you know, you have to be inside wha wha a club to know what's, what is the problem, really. And for me, it's difficult to judge right now. Uh, the following season after the Invincible season, you beat Man United in the FA Cup final. Were they your main rivals with your, at your time at Arsenal? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, uh -huh. you know, it, oh, it was tough to play against them. Uh -huh. And uh, I remember this game, you know, it was, it was an amazing game. I, I think that uh, we, we won this game, but we, we get mad. Uh -huh. You know, they played better. They missed so many chances and at the end we won them penalties. And I was really, really happy, definitely. But we had the fighting spirit again there. You know, never give up, working hard, giving everything, working for each other, you know back up each other, you know, it was an amazing feeling. Uh, the Champions League final as well, again with Arsenal, you reached the Champions League final. 1-0 um, up, weren't you? But then down to 10 men. Don't want to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Should you have won the game, do you think? Yeah, we was the best team. Yeah. You know, we was the best team. We were the best team in Europe for me at this time. Uh -huh. You know, we, and I think Barcelona, when we was like, uh, 11, uh, V11 on the pitch, you know, I don't think they was better than us. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, we had uh, the goalkeeper going out. Mm. And I'm sure that uh, I can say that because I'm sure that if uh, we had uh, all the players on the pitch, we was going to win this game. Henrik Larsson came on for Barcelona. You'll know he's a, a massive, <laughs> <laughs> a massive hero at Celtic. Don't uh, talk to him about him. <laughs> were, uh, were Arsenal players aware of Larsson before the game and stuff like that, or were you a bit no, surprised? Be, he, he, you know, he came on, you know, and. He, he had a great action there, you know, the, on the goal, you know, he uh -huh. just, his body position was perfect, you know, he just had the right position and touched the ball for Samuel Eto, who scored an amazing goal, you know, and that's, uh, they are top players, you know, and uh -huh. you expect that from top players, definitely. After that, uh, quite a lot of the top players started to leave, I think Henri left. Did, did, you, did you think this is going to get difficult to keep winning things when these players are leaving the club? Um, if, you know, you, you know the way football is, you know, you have leaders in the team and uh, of course, you know, there is things going at the back of uh, the room, you know, and uh, you don't, you don't really notice her, you know, but uh, when he left, we, we, we still like, of course, try to do as much as possible because I was, I was there, mm -hmm. you know, but it's always difficult to lose like uh, big players like them, definitely. And not replacing them with higher quality. The quality was there, yeah. the quality, but it was uh, a few young players, yeah? mm -hmm. you know, and it's always difficult to lose like very, very experienced players. Like uh, they are top players. You, th that, those kind of players, you don't find them like very easy. You can't even buy them because clubs who have them don't want to leave them go. See, when you're at an Arsenal, see, like, when, do you think about like, a Barcelona and a Real Madrid come in for you? You always want to go. No, 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 no. For me, I was really happy in yeah. Arsenal. Yeah, I was really, really happy on Arsenal until a few things happened, of course, you know, but I was really, really happy in Arsenal because, you know, Arsenal is a, is a club that I love, uh -huh. you know, and, and uh, for me, Arsenal just, that's where everything starts for me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, I, I was seeing my, myself to be there for as long, for all my career. But, you know, things coming, you know, and players coming, and, uh, you know, sometimes the relation is not great with some and uh, decisions have to be made. Uh -huh. So do, do you regret leaving Arsenal or do you think it was the right decision at the right uh, time? Um, uh, to be honest, you know, uh, if like I didn't have anything, any problem there or everything was fine, I was going to stay in Arsenal for all my career because it's a great club, uh -huh. great, great club, fantastic fans, uh, training group is amazing, Mr. Wenger is a top guy, you know, and uh, he's been there, he, he's done amazing. And if, when you look at the club, you know, the club is so well structured, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and, and that is it, it, London too, mm -hmm. you know, is London. And many, I know that many players who, and I remember that Mr. Wenger told me one day, when you leave Arsenal, you will regret, mm -hmm. you know, that's what he told me, you know. And of course, you know, when you leave a club like that, because it's a great, great club, I'm telling you, great, great, great club. So was it somebody that came in that you didn't get, didn't get on with you? Sorry? Someone that came into the club, a player that you didn't <laughs> get on with. <laughs> there is always problem, you know, uh -huh. in every way, you know. And uh, I, there is, uh, there is things that I didn't like, you know. And uh, uh, he was a player who came and uh, I think he was not good. I don't think he, he was, uh, 
It makes my life difficult, you know, and I don't like that.